Ahoy there makers, let's take a look at the Plasma 2040. Swathe everything in rainbows with this all-in-one USB-C powered controller for the WS2812 or NeoPixel and APA102 or Dot Star addressable LED strips. So the Plasma 2040 is an RP2040 based driver board for addressable LED strips also known as magical rainbows by the meter. It's designed to make rigging up bits of custom programmable lighting as straightforward as possible, perfect for whipping up the quick under the cupboard illumination, dramatic under lighting for your sofa, <laughs> or providing some atmospheric mood lighting for your workplace, PC or vivarium. So the Plasma 2040 is powered and programmable by USB-C. And because USB-C is capable of drawing up to three amps of power, that's enough to power a healthy chunk of LEDs. There's three useful buttons as well that you could turn lights on and off with or switch between color effects, uh, plus a reset button and an eternally popular onboard LED. Yes, you get one for free. We've also popped on there a Quest connector to make it easy to connect up quick or STEM QT breakouts. So you can hook up things like a potentiometer so you can control the speed or hue of your lights. You could even plug in an air quality sensor to make your desk or under lighting a giant thermometer. Or it can even tell you when to crack open a window or a light sensor to automatically turn them on when it gets dark, which is pretty cool. So let's have a look at some of the features. So it's powered by the Raspberry Pi RP2040. And that, if you remember, is a dual core Cortex M0 Plus running at 133 megahertz with 264K of RAM. Now it also has two megs of onboard flash storage, which is plenty of room for all your Python scripts or C++ code. And it's compatible with the five volts WS2812 or NeoPixel or SK6812 and the APA 102 dot star or SK9822 LEDs. It has screw terminals, which makes it really easy to connect in your LED strips, either the three or four wire variety. And it has a USB-C connector for connecting when you are programming. There is the Quest connector as well. There's low side current sensing addressable via ADC3. And there is the reset, boot, and two user buttons. And the boot button can also be user programmable as well. There's an RGB LED. It's fully assembled, so there's absolutely no soldering required. And it measures 50 by 28 by 12 millimeters, so it's really quite small. And you can use C++ or MicroPython libraries. And there is also a schematic on the website as well. You can get LED strips and connectors from our store, so check them out on the extras tab as well. So getting started, the Plasma 2040 is firmware agnostic, and this means you can program in C, C++, MicroPython, as well as CircuitPython as well, just like you would with a regular Raspberry Pi Pico. CircuitPython is really easy to use and well-established ecosystem with loads of example code, driver, interfacing with different kinds of hardware. Check out the learning system for a friendly beginner's tutorial that covers how to do all the kinds of things that you want to do with the Plasma 2040 and how to build a simple busy light. It includes micro Python and circuit Python code as well in the examples. So connecting up the breakouts couldn't be simpler. It's just the Quest connector there. Uh, so if, if a breakout has a Quest connector on it, you can simply plug it straight into the JST-SH connector with a JST-SH cable. Or you can easily connect any of our I2C breakout garden devices using a JST-SH to JST-SH coupled with a Quest to breakout garden adapter. You can find a list of all the different breakouts that we have that are currently compatible with C++ or MicroPython on our product page. We've also broken down a set of I2C pins, analog pins and debug pins so you can solve the things like breakouts, uh, analog potentiometers, all those kinds of things directly onto the board or solder a strip of header pins as well to make the whole plug-in shebang a lot more easier. So some final notes on this. Um, our C++ and MicroPython software uses the RP2040's PIO state machines to drive each strip separately. This board only has one set of LED strip connectors, but if with some innovative wiring, it's possible to wire up multiple strips simultaneously, even if they're of different type, the three or four wire variety. If you're curious about how much current your LEDs are currently consuming, we've also incorporated some current sensing circuitry on the board, uh, and you can check that by reading the ADC3. You could code this um, to do things like adjusting the brightness of your LEDs based on the available power so it doesn't overload. And finally, the RP2040. This is the Raspberry Pi organization's flagship microcontroller. It's running a dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus running at 133 megahertz, bundles the 264 of RAM we mentioned earlier. It has 30 multifunction GPIO pins, including four channel, 12 bit ADC, a heap of standard peripherals, that's the I2C, SPI, UART, pulse width modulation, clocks, and so on. 
as well as USB support. One very exciting feature of the RP2040 is the programmable IOs, and they allow us to execute programs that can manipulate GPIOs, transfer data very quickly between peripherals, and they can offload those tasks that require a much higher data transfer rate with precise timing that traditionally would require a lot of heavy lifting from the main CPU. So let's have a look at a demo, shall we? Okay, so what I've got over here, I've got the uh, Plasma 2040 on the desk there, and I've got an LED strip. So you can just see that there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn out the overhead light so that we can see the LEDs a bit easier. And we're gonna run some example codes. So this is some code that I've thrown together very quickly. So you can see there we're importing the Plasma library. Now I've used the batteries included Pimeroni firmware for MicroPython. I've grabbed that from the product page. Uh, I've flashed it onto this Plasma 2040. So that means I can simply just import Plasma and it understands what that library is. And then from Plasma, I'm importing the Plasma 2040. And that allows us to choose which type of LED strips that we're actually using. I'm also importing time and sleep. We we'll use that in some later examples, but I think on this one, we don't actually use it. Uh, and then I'm setting the LED number to 150. So the number of LEDs I have on my strip over here is actually 150. And I'm also setting the frames per second to 60. So the first thing we do is we do LED strip equals plasma dot AP 102. That's the type of LED strips that I'm using, which is the four, vi four wire variety. I'm telling it that the number of LEDs that are on this strip. And I'm also saying that this has a data and clock line. So then we are setting the uh, frames per second. We're just telling it to start that. And then we're simply going to set the very first RGB LED. So the index of the RGB LED is zero. And then these three values here are the red, green, and blue. So I'm setting the red value to 128, which is about half the full power. So let's run that code and see what happens. So if I do that and I look at my other camera there, you can see we have a single LED uh, lit up. Let's make the next one. 128 as well. So this should make it sort of a yellow color. So let's have a look at that as well. You can see that there. And if we set the last one to 128, then it will be white. So you can see that now, there we go, it's fully white. Okay, the next program, we're gonna do something a little bit fancier on this one, we're gonna use a loop. So on this one, we're gonna loop through each of the LEG, RGB LEDs, and we're going to do something fancy. If it's not the very first one, we're gonna basically say, set whatever the current index is in our loop to minus one. So that means whatever the RGB LED is before this one, set that one to nothing, but set the current one to red. And if we then sleep for, uh, I think that's at like a tenth of a second, we shall see a really interesting effect. So let's run this one. We get like a little chaser effect. Now it looks quite interesting because they're all coiled up. But if this was just layout um, on a line, you would just see it streak across the line there. So that's quite a nice little effect there. The next loop that we're going to look at on example number two. So this is going to do quite a few different loops that are embedded. So let's run this and then we'll have a look at some of the code. So this is going to pulse in and out. It's gonna actually change the values of the LEDs uh, and then it's gonna sleep a little bit in between them. So there's two sets of inner loops, one that will make the brightness go up and then one that will make the brightness go down. So we're doing steps of minus one and then we're setting the LED RGBs for each of the different values. So this will actually change color. Um, it will change through all the different colors over time and it's currently just pulsing very very slowly there you can see it's getting to go slightly orange there and then onto yellow and then it'll go on to to uh, green as well so i'll stop that one then number three so this one uh, this is quite a nice effect let's uh, run this one so what i'm doing here is, is i'm setting the hsv so hsv is a hue saturation and value or brightness uh, so we can set RGBs either by the RGB value, the red, green, blue value, or we can use the hue, saturation, and value instead. So if we change the hue on here, and it's a value between 0 and 1, say 0.5, and let's try running that. So it's now a bluish color. If we try this to be 3, oops, 3 instead of 53, this should be one of the primary colors. So this will be green. And if we change that to 0.6, we'll get the other um, primary color, which is blue. And then everything in between that as well. So that'd be more of a purpley color, I guess. There we go. And we can change the brightness of this as well. So if we make this to 
8 and then run that you'll see that it goes even brighter there we go or if we change that down to like 0.2 brightness then it'll be a lot dimmer and then the saturation is just how much of that color is coming through so if we change that to i don't know four for example and we run that it'll look quite washed out the color if we change that to 0.2 and run it again you'll see it's even more washed out there's even less of that purple in there whereas if we set that to be one and we run it again it will be the full purple color um, and if we change the brightness back up to one then we shall see that at full strength there we go okay and then test number four this is another piece of code which is going to do something fancy with loops so we're going to this time use that hsv which is a really good way of changing all the leds in some way and we've got some fancy maths going on here so let's just run this and see what happens so this is kind of kind of a, a rainbow effect as it's changing pulsing through all the different colors well, not so much pulsing as just cycling through all the different colors so we can see there that it's got a loop h and i and i is the index and h is the hue value so as that changes based on whatever is in that loop and we can set the number of steps that are in there um, it will then cycle through that and our sleep function is the thing that's defining the speed so if we make that really really quick and run this we'll get like a really quick change in effect let's add another zero and see how fast we can make this go yep so it goes pretty quick there and then finally on test five this one uh, is my favorite one it's kind of a combination of all of them so we've got a chaser effect we've got a rainbow we've got a pulsing in and out it's kind of a bit of everything and i'm outputting there to the shell the hue brightness and saturation values as well so you can see there it's a bit of a party going on and this looks absolutely amazing if you've got like a product you're taking a picture of it you get some led strips around it with a nice rainbow effect you can get some really really interesting imagery on there so I did um, a video on this quite recently on my other channel, which is uh, youtube.com slash kevinmaclear28. So I did a, a show all about RGB LED strips uh, and how we can use them in our code for robotics. So if you're interested in that, check out that as well. So thanks for watching this short intro video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.